Okay, I'll uh, sh uh, share a kind of incident with you. It's kind of graphic, so uh, please be warned. This is a rather disturbing uh, incident that took place. Okay. And uh, before you do pass your judgment that all these people of this religion, that is, uh, is like that. Remember these incidents take place most with every religion, country, you know, like they say, a psychopath is a psychopath. No, you can be any religion, any nationality. Okay, having said that, let's focus on the incident. In my blood and gore group that I have, uh, it's a graphic group, you know, where they show graphic incidents and all that. There's this video that was shared of a Pakistani Muslim. Um, what he did was a very beautiful, his, his daughter, very beautiful, extremely beautiful. Huh? Oh, when I looked at the photograph, I was like, wow, she is truly, truly beautiful. Okay. But in the subsequent, you know, they said, no, group of photographs and videos. In the next video is a headless body. It has been decapitated. And uh, the uh, police are talking and saying, yeah, he cut her head and this and that and all that. And oh, the next video, they show him. And here they ask him, why did you cut off the head? Why did you chop her head off? And he responds by saying, I told her once not to go out. She went out. The second time I had to teach her a lesson. Okay, so he cut, or, uh, cut her head off because he wanted to teach her a lesson. And obviously he felt she was bringing dishonor to his name, his tradition, his religion. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure there'll be a flood of comments about like, for example, oh, this is very typical with Muslims, this is very typical with Pakistanis, this is very typical with uh, this religion. And on the other side, you also have Pakistanis who say, no, Islam doesn't teach you all this. Islam teaches you love. And we can go endlessly with no one agreeing. Now, such crimes I've seen happen in Syria, Iran, uh, okay, maybe the news is not there so much. Saudi, not just beheading, it is like honor killings and the transgressions that take place against women. Okay. It's really, it's incredibly unfortunate, incredibly unfortunate that uh, that even at this today, even today, this day and age, you have men, you have societies that believe a man, okay, fine, head of the family, but he is so dominant or he is so powerful. If he doesn't like something, he can physically, he has a right to physically harm. To the extent where he can chop the head or cause physical damage or death to his own child and without having an iota of remorse. I mean, you really have to be, your whole culture, tradition, religion, upbringing has to be so brain dead for you to believe this is normal. I think what uh, disturbs me the most is when people use, see the problem with religion, any kind of religion, is because it is in parables and words, it's, it's not, let, let, let's say for example, he says, his spirit flew from her to him, and if he disrespects the Most High, he should be brought to task. Example, you know, poetic words. If he disrespects the Creator, he should be brought to task. Now, one guy can say, yeah, brought to task means he, he should be held accountable. Another person say, he should be taken to court. Third person say, yeah, his family should punish him. Fourth person should say, he should punish himself. Fifth person should say, uh, he can say that brought to task means, we have to teach him a lesson. One other person may say, bought to task means you have to kill him. So you see, I'm giving a small example. A, a very 
popular example is this concept of jihad. Okay. Now, jihad can mean so many things to so many people. Uh, say fatwa, a term that is so loosely used. On one side, you have Muslims saying, okay, we'll issue a fatwa on him for his death. Other people say, a fatwa is God's, uh, you know, it's a religious announcement where you have to do something good. Jihad is, some people say, you know, jihad means uh, something else. Uh, well, uh, so, then they use this term, love jihad. And 100 people have 100 translations. Now, obviously, a Muslim is who supports his religion, who loves his religion, will say, no, this is wrong. Okay, he'll say, he'll deny it. He'll say, no, Islam doesn't teach all this. But in the same light, those very same people can also keep quiet because they see so much of injustice happening to them. So it's, it's not so straightforward. For that, if you look at it in that way, I've told you before, it, this can happen to any religion. You have in Hinduism, Hinduism, you have people who uh, believe there are these criminals who say girls should be taught a lesson. And how do they teach a lesson? By rape. We taught her a lesson. You have Christians in Christianity. How many priests are pedophiles? How many priests feel it's normal? Where does it end? In fact, the Catholic Church has protected its own priests because they have so much of power. Now you'll say, Roy, but it's not as bad as this. What, are we going to compare? Oh, which is good? This is good. It's all bad. You rape a child. It's as bad as that. You, but these are two different, totally different crimes, which are both horrific in nature. You can't say, oh, it's like chocolate and vanilla, chocolate and vanilla, which is more tasty. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop justifying nonsense. For me, how I look at it is, it's sad. The whole thing is deplorable. It's, I saw that face of that small girl. My heart just sank, man. Imagine, still it goes on, where they take acid. If a girl says no to you, they throw acid on the face and destroy this girl's life just to teach you a lesson. In some other cultures, they have in Vice News, where they kidnap the girl, they rape the girl, and then she has to marry the guy. What do you do? I, I just, my reaction is very simple. I know that this darkness is there on our planet. It can come in the form of any religion, any culture, any tradition. It need not be just one. Yes, there are some more than in some countries and in some religions than the other. Yes, there is some more you hear in terms of news coverage than the other. But at the end of the day, it's all sick. I just know and I need to do whatever it takes to protect my loved ones. If you, if me or you or anyone can educate others and tell them what is wrong and what is right, based on simple common sense, simple common sense, without putting a religious or, uh, I don't know, cultural twist to it, being good to another human being doesn't take rocket science. And killing a child, Sad. Yes, it is true that in Pakistan, uh, Muslims are concerned for them, Allah and uh, Quran, and that is superior to anything, anything and everything. They don't mind dying a hundred times, they don't mind killing a hundred times, there are some of them in the name of religion. What can you do? These are people from Afghanistan or Pakistan or Syria. For them, it's either glory to some sky god with some prophet guy, some holy book. Cut, chop, kill, bomb blast, murder. And they feel it's honor. What can you do about it? But seriously, very disturbing and uh, all I want to say is I was just left speechless.
very sad what happened very sad and just so that you know a lot of muslims a lot of the people in my groups at least they have common sense thankfully it was sad they just hated it and unanimously everyone said this is bad i guess i wouldn't tolerate it otherwise anyway this is all i wanted to share with you guys good bad ugly let me know your thoughts in the comments below so me signing off chalma Thank you.